Hi, and welcome back to this class on the basics of computational engineering. Now in this class, we are going to get into what is computational engineering, what is a computational engineer, and the basics of everything that goes with computational engineering. Obviously, this is quite important as you begin your journey along computational engineering is what is it? So we're going to define that in this class. Now, one of the key things that we have to keep in mind as we go forward in computational engineering is, although the English has a saying, computational, then engineering, really it's about engineering first and then computation. Now, that's really, really a key learning objective of this course, is for you to remember as you go forward and in your career as a computational engineer, that you remember that this is super, super important that you put your engineering first principles first. So what are first principles, just in case we all don't know? Well, first principles are things like math, physics, or engineering-specific degrees. So if you were a facade engineer or a structural engineer, that would be things like statics. If you were an MEP or building physics engineer, that would be things like thermodynamics. These are the things that we went to school for. These are the first principle sciences that run our world. The main thing is, is as we use computation, we're augmenting those skill sets with a new skill. And oftentimes we run the risk as we do that, that we get so excited with our new skill that we start to neglect our original skills. We have to be very careful as computational engineers that we resist the urge to forget our engineering first principles and always respect that we are engineers first and we are using computation to become better engineers. The computation can never be a distraction to the main engineering outcomes. And hence, this course is all about taking good engineers and making them use code. That's what this is all about. So you most likely have already learned a lot about your engineering background, whether that is through school or whether that is through working. And effectively, if you look at all the courses in the world represented here on this diagram as dots, there are much fewer opportunities for people to learn good first principles engineering design than there is to learn code. There are plenty of courses online to learn code. If you want to learn Python, there are hundreds and hundreds of courses, more coming out every day. And you could easily go watch those courses. The key is, is as an engineer, you may be very lost when it comes to how to employ those new skills as an engineer. And as such, this course and all the courses on the computationalengineer.com are about taking you, your first principles, on a journey from left to right on this diagram going from first principles engineering to first principles engineering with coding. Why is this an important thing for us as engineers to be able to employ coding? This is summed up very nicely by Mario Carpo in a great book called The Alphabet and the Algorithm, where Mario Carpo reminds us that design is a purely informational operation. Very few of us in engineering are dealing with hard things, physical things. We're not actually building buildings. We're creating data or information, as Mario would call it, that represents the buildings. And this is a key tenant of why it is important to think about becoming a computational engineer, because we are already inherently practitioners in data, whether it's making calculations, making drawings, making models, we are inherently creating data on a day-to-day -day basis and in everything that we do. So when we look at what is a computational engineer, this is the key test. Number one in the test, do you have engineering first principles? Now, engineering first principles come in many forms, but effectively, are you an engineer? Have you been trained? Have you been trained either in school, on the job, both? Can you work with other collaborators? Do you understand engineering? If you have that, tick, that's one. Then there's a second one. Can you communicate with the computer using code? 
can you effectively engage the computer as a design collaborator using code? That is the key second step. That is the litmus test of a computational engineer. You must be able to have first engineering first principles as well as coding skills.